Kel Evie, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, if you'd like to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your company and your role within it. With pleasure. Uh, my name is Kalevi Reijanen. I'm re representing uh, Fit Biotech, uh, which is a Finnish biotech company targeting the development of a therapeutic HIV vaccine based on our proprietary uh, DNA plasmid technology. We're a, a clinical stage uh, biotech company. We have moved the, product, uh, the project to phase two and uh, we are looking at uh, partnering opportunities. Excellent. And um, how's, how's that working out for you at the moment? Uh, Have you seen the, any success today? Uh, we are making progress, clearly. We are talking to some of the big uh, boys. Uh, it happens that we, so far with the Phase 2A trial, we have demonstrated biological efficacy, uh, but uh, the clinical proof of concept still remains to be demonstrated. And that's what we uh, plan to do together in collaboration with a corporate uh, partner. And we've been talking a lot about then changing technologies and the way things have been uh, developing. Are you finding that technology is having a big impact on your developments? Uh, for us, for our approach, definitely this is a novel technology. I mean, DNA technology has been around for whatever, 20 years, but uh, without any major success, we've been able to solve uh, some of uh, the challenges there like uh, uh, the transfection, then we've been able to develop a nice uh, uh, artificial uh, antigen and uh, in a phase two trial we have really been able to demonstrate that it works uh, in terms of uh, having a biological effect. Our product uh, reduces uh, plasma viral load and it increases uh, CD4 uh, immune uh, cell levels. Excellent. We've also been hearing a lot of talk about payment structures at the moment and the way that funding has been uh, agreed between the, the, the larger companies and the biotech firms. Um, how are they changing at the moment or how are you finding that change? Uh, definitely Big Pharma has to step in uh, uh, at an earlier point in time, traditionally the business model was that uh, a biotech or a development company should uh, develop a project uh, up to demonstrating clinical proof of concept. Um, like in our case, uh, it's very expensive and uh, needs also a little bit different set of uh, human resources, which uh, a biotech company does not necessarily have. So. In our mind, uh, a big pharma company should step in uh, a little bit uh, earlier once uh, there is clearly preclinical or clinical proof of concept uh, on, uh, on the table. It serves the interests of uh, all the parties, but uh, we're working in a difficult, uh, challenging field. Uh, DNA plasmid technology combined with a target disease like uh, HIV but one should uh, keep in mind that uh, we are primarily targeting a therapeutic vaccine uh, without forgetting the possibility of later on developing a preventive one as well. So um, finances aside then, um, what is it as someone looking uh, for big pharma companies to, to take you on board, what is it you look for in those pharma companies that would make you want to, to partner up with them? Uh, an ideal partner for us is either one of uh, the companies that are already in the vaccines field with a demonstrated interest uh, in the HIV disease or one of the companies having AIDS drugs in its, uh, uh, in, uh, in, in its uh, portfolio because uh, uh, the way we look at uh, this uh, opportunity it's related to uh, the patients uh, and the medical need that's out there and we also realize that uh, the whole market is changing very rapidly so many of the big uh, products will uh, become generic and the question is that uh, what should uh, the companies do in order to stay in this uh, very business say uh, in the next uh, five to ten years to, to come and that's why we see that there is the medical need uh, of uh, bringing products uh, based on new uh, modes of, of action on, on board and also there is a need to improve the current uh, 
uh, products. They are effective in terms of uh, efficacy, but uh, uh, regarding side effects, there is still uh, quite some, uh, some miles that uh, one could walk. Do you think we'll get there? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm positive we're going to get uh, there because uh, we think that uh, the results that we have shown so far, they are certainly very uh, interesting and attractive. Fantastic. Well, thinking about that, uh, the, 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 uh, the, sort of the big drugs that you were talking about before, um, we were hearing just before that there's the, the, I think it was the Tufts Centre for the study of drug development, they've just released this report about uh, the pharma companies and their changing the R&D strategy because of the uh, dozen prescription drugs that are soon going to be losing their patent protection. And I would have thought the patent protection side is probably quite important to a company developing new technologies. Yeah. And do you think that it's a good idea that they're changing and um, what, uh, what difference is it going to make to you and your strategies? I think that uh, what we are offering to Big Pharma is uh, uh, the opportunity for them to share the risk. I mean, uh, we've been uh, carrying the project up to this point in time uh, with partly public money, partly money coming from uh, uh, VCs without any involvement of Big Pharma. But uh, obviously, uh, there's still some miles to, to go. Uh, during which we would like to see that Big Pharma is sharing in the risk, but also then there comes hopefully the time when we can share in, in the profit uh, together with uh, Big Pharma. So uh, this is uh, a risk-averse uh, business model for uh, uh, Big Pharma because uh, they heavily can tap on, on financing, funding coming from uh, VCs, coming from uh, from public sources, especially uh, in a disease domain like HIV, which gets a lot of uh, public funding. And finally, what are your major concerns, uh, 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 what do you think are the major concerns of the industry for this year? Uh, okay, uh, the challenges for the industry, I mean, uh, the challenges are stra of strategic nature. It's not that much uh, what's going to happen during this uh, uh, very year. Uh, the whole industry has to adapt to the changes we see over the next uh, five to ten years. Uh, uh, so many of the big uh, products uh, are going to lose uh, patent coverage. Then the question is that, that where do big companies find new growth? Uh, because there are no low-hanging fruit anymore. Uh, the uh, traditional typical diseases that we have in the uh, developed countries. I mean, we have fairly good drugs to treat them. We only want to pay the generic price. We don't have uh, money. We can't afford anything more. So Big Pharma has to look at the opportunities coming from the emerging markets. There are also so-called neglected diseases uh, uh, like uh, uh, malaria, tuberculosis to certain uh, extent uh, and not to speak about uh, HIV where we got the drugs but uh, no preventive vaccine not even uh, uh, in the site uh, say within uh, five to ten years difficult to believe that uh, such a vaccine would be available whereas as I said uh, the therapeutic vaccine that we are targeting uh, if everything goes according to the plan such a product could uh, hit the street uh, uh, in uh, five to six years from today. Well, thank you very much. It's all fascinating stuff. And um, yes, very good luck with uh, the conference. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you.